Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the theory of endosymbiosis, which is really quite beautiful. But before we can understand endosymbiosis and the origin of mitochondria and chloroplasts, uh, we need to also understand prokaryotes. So when we look at um, prokaryotic cells, they are single-celled organisms that have a cell membrane. So our prokaryotes are bacteria and archaeans. And that cell membrane, though, is surrounded by a cell wall. Um, and they have one circular chromosome. And uh, they have ribosomes. Their ribosomes are a different size than eukaryotic ribosomes. However, they function the same way. And they have these extra pieces of DNA called plasmids. And these plasmids are tiny. They carry anywhere from 50 to 500 genes on them, but they are separate from their one large main circular chromosome. So when we look at bacteria and archaeans or prokaryotes, they don't do mitosis because they don't have a nucleus to divide. So instead, um, bacteria and archaeans or prokaryotes will go through a process called binary fission, where they'll double their main circular chromosome, increase in size, and then eventually divide in half or into two. And so here you have two clones of um, the original parent cell. So this process is called binary fission. Now, when we look at um, two awesome organelles, uh, they also, our mitochondria and our chloroplasts, also have their own plasmids, their own ribosomes, and they divide by binary fission. So our mitochondria, we inherit from our mother. Like if you take out all the mitochondria from a cell, we don't make more. We don't have it in our genome. We don't have the directions to build mitochondria. Um, they are already in our cells. So when our cells divide, that cytoplasm gets divided and mitochondria end up in both. And so um, when we look at this here, uh, mitochondria also, um, when let's say you're getting in shape, like right now this is 2020 and where I'm home on a shelter at home for the COVID-19 virus. And so I've been working out a lot. And so as um, you exercise and you put greater demand on your muscles, um, in that like two week window of you getting in shape, you are actually increasing the number of mitochondria in your muscle cells. And then eventually your workout, your run or something gets easier and easier, partly because your heart gets more efficient, et cetera. But another reason is you have more mitochondria. And so as you put that greater demand on your muscles, your mitochondria will actually divide by binary fission and increase in number in your cells. Um, the mitochondria also have their own um, plasmids um, and ribosomes, which this is important for the um, unit three topic of aerobic respiration, where we look at that electron transport chain um, within the um, sorry within the mitochondria's inner membrane. And then the chloroplasts also have their own plasmids and their own ribosomes. Now, um, when we look at our chloroplast and our mitochondria, we also noto notice that these two organelles have a double membrane. So if you think about like a lysosome, a lysosome is just a membrane bound organelle. However, here you can see in the mitochondria and the chloroplast, they have two membranes. Now, where did those membranes come from, right? So if we think back to, um, Oh gosh, I don't even know how many millions and millions of years ago, but a very long time ago, you had a small cell, small single prokaryotic cell in that is an energy producing cell engulfed. So remember the process of endocytosis, so like engulfing and taking in. So right here, this is important, right here, this area, of this engulfing cell, this cell membrane of this peach colored cell, as it engulfs and takes in that smaller cell, this is now like the outer membrane of a mitochondria or a chloroplast. So when we talk about like the mitochondria here has two membranes and you have this 
oh gosh, this inner membrane within. So that inner membrane of the mitochondria where the electron transport chain is located is right here. And then this is the outer membrane. So when we talk about like that proton gradient that accumulates in aerobic respiration, all of those um, hydrogen ions, those are filling up in this space. This is the inner intermembrane space. And so um, this right here occurred millions of years ago. It is not currently still occurring and that's where mitochondria come from. This is something in the past that explains the evolution of these organelles. So here, when we think about this, um, this ties into ecology when we talk about the word symbiosis. So in symbiosis, that means living closely together. Um, here we have uh, two cells that are living in a close relationship, and it's actually a mutualistic relationship. This smaller prokaryotic cell that was engulfed is producing energy for the larger cell, and the larger cell is providing like protection for that smaller cell. So it was beneficial for both. And as time went on, as that larger cell divides, the smaller cell within it stayed. Um, and it was a mutual, sorry, um, a mutualistic relationship for both of them. So when we look at this theory, it's a theory because it's incredibly well supported um, of endosymbiosis. It proposes that mitochondria and chloroplasts were formerly, they're not still, but formerly small prokaryotic um, cells living within larger ones. Oops. So if we think about the evidence for this, like how do we know this? Well, it, oh, I thought I had one more slide. Um, is it comes down to uh, they, uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts have a double membrane, which other organelles don't. They have their own plasmids which plasmids are unique to prokaryotes here, yo. So they have their own plasmids, which is extra nuclear, like DNA that's outside of the nucleus. So if you come across a question asking about DNA that is not in the nucleus, in like a, an, a human, it's gonna be in the mitochondria. Like that's where we find any extra DNA. Um, and, uh, or you can, um, chloroplasts have their own plasmids and they have their own ribosomes uh, within that matrix or within that stroma. And so um, those are your pieces of evidence that, so double membrane, extra um, DNA in the form of plasmids, their own DNA, as well as um, their own ribosomes. Now, I also want to point out that the mitochondria in like humans and in animals is inherited from their mother because our cytoplasm in the egg has the organelles, and then when the sperm fertilizes the egg, it's really only contributing the linear chromosomes, like to complete like the diploid organism. So the um, uh, mitochondria only come from your parents. So if a child has a mutation in their mitochondrial DNA that results in some kind of genetic disease, uh, that was inherited only from the mother. And it can only be passed on from daughters to offspring. Sons won't pass it on because they don't pass their mitochondria on to their offspring. Okay, I hope this was helpful.